Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back to the channel. I am happy to be here on another sunny Sabbath. Um, and we are going to have a good lesson today. So we are so happy that this is the day that y'all has made. So let's rejoice and be glad in it. And I love to always say, in all thy ways, all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. So we are here. We are blessed to see another Sabbath. I say that all the time because we have to be thankful that we made it through another week of hard work. We get to take the day to rest and get into the Most High. So all praises to it, all praise to his holy name. We give him all honor, all glory to the Most High uh, around here. And we are very thankful that we are here to see another day. So I want to start out with the foundational scripture um, in Titus 2, 3 through 5. So if you have your King James Version Bible, go ahead and pull that out with the Apocrypha. And let's turn to Titus 2. And I'm going to read 3 through 5. So it reads as follows. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, Keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of Yah be not blasphemed. So the title of today's video is all about faith. How deep is your faith? And I'm kind of surprised, to be honest with you, that I haven't touched on this earlier because it's so important to have very deep faith. Honestly, it's like the most important thing. So we're going to bring out a lot of scriptures um and we are just going to just rock and roll through them i mean it just it just go ahead and just bring out his word because it is um an important lesson uh that i wanted to bring out but how deep is your faith you know i know a lot of us are in this truth and we can you know focus so much on the law statutes and commandments and making sure that you're doing everything making sure that you know the old testament uh, then you know the New Testament and you're following Hamashiach and, and all of this and, and all of that, you know, you know, the breakdowns, you know, some of the men out there, no breakdowns and um, and they've been blessed with wisdom and women out here, you know, we've been blessed with wisdom and there's so many things that you'll understand in the Bible. But then you have to think about how deep your faith is, because those are two different things. We can believe in all of that, but still lack in faith and still have a lot of doubt about what is possible and what it is that he can actually do for you. So I wanted to bring out a lot of scriptures today so we can be reminded and be encouraged and also kind of reevaluate how our faith is and how deep your faith needs to be in these end times. Let's be reminded. I don't say that enough when I make these videos. These are the end times days and it is time to really hone in on all of this like making sure that you are following everything cleaning up your garment my king was just saying that the other day you gotta make sure you clean up your garment and you really do you gotta pray on these things you gotta focus on these things you know and it really is so very important so again how deep is your faith so let's go to the book of hebrews and we're gonna go to chapter 10 so let's go ahead to the book of Hebrews, not too far from Titus, actually. So you should get there quickly. And let's go to chapter 10. And I want to read 22 and 23. So it reads as follows. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. So that's important. You know, we want to make sure that if we are talking about our faith, we want to draw near to the Most High and make sure that we're doing it with true and full assurance of our faith, right? So we'll keep going. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And that right there, I mean, honestly, the Most High is so faithful with, with, he, with, with, with what he has promised to us. He does not change. The Most High doesn't change, not even a little bit. The Ancient of Days does not change at all. But it is us because, you know, we have to rely on what we've not seen. We have to rely on 
um, what we read and, and that's what faith is all about. You know, that's what Hebrews, and I didn't even write this one down, but we can flip over one page and see the definition. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And that's exactly what it is. It is a substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. You know, we have to have faith knowing that we have not seen the same miracles that, that they used to have back in you know, the Old Testament, um, we have to have faith that things are going to happen, even though there's no assurance that things might happen. But you just have to know that it's like, let go and let God, the old saying of that, let go and let God. And you want to make sure that you do it without wavering at all. And that is what, you know, Hebrews 10 and 23 says, let us hold, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, without wavering. So don't go back and forth with your with your faith, you know, wondering, you know, well, you know, is it going to happen? You know, I'm not exactly sure. You know, I don't, you know, I, I should, you know, take this step and take that step and do it myself. I know I can do it, you know, but that's not what the Most High wants. The Most High wants you to depend on him so you can take away that stress and know that he's going to do it. You're talking about the creator of everything, everything. We have to really put that into perspective. Every single thing that is done on this earth that has been done every single thing that will be done it is all controlled by the most high hashatan is controlled by the most high evil is controlled by the most high their their scripture says a hair won't even be touched on your head unless you're not walking in the law statutes and commandments there's a hedge that can be put around you so i want us all to get encouraged and built up in what this thing truly is about that's why i was so excited to bring out this video because, you know, it's been, you know, years that I've, you know, been built up in my faith. And I'm like, you know, we need to talk about this because there's a lot of people that struggle, especially in Israel, you know, with how deep their faith truly is. Do you really believe that that sky is going to crack open? Do you really believe that chariots are going to come and take you away during Jacob's trouble? Do you really believe that if it's down to you getting, you know, put to the slaughter, how deep is your faith really going to be? You know, I encourage all of you to read 2 Maccabees chapter 7. I had a whole vet, uh, video uh, where I went into that. And it's about a, a, the mother and her seven sons. And their faith was so deep. It was insane when you read that story. It's in the Apocrypha. It's in this. It's in the Apocrypha. Um, and it's 2 Maccabees 7. Um, and that whole entire chapter goes into the mother and her seven sons and how much faith that they actually had with in the face of adversity, in the face of death, where they were just like, I know that the Most High is with me. I already know that the Most High is not with you. You're the one that needs to be worried about it, you know, but we all have to have that faith because, faith, because this is the end time. So we have no idea of what's coming except for what we read, but it's coming. We know that. So if you're thrown into a concentration camp, you hear, hear what I'm saying? Like if there's things that have to happen to you, you're separated from your family, you know, are you going to have faith? Are you going to, you know, have an issue like, you know, Peter had all praises that Peter was still saved, but are you going to have issues like Peter had when, when the crucifixion was happening and your house, I was walking, you know, and, and people were turning to Peter and they were like, you know, you're with him. And just like your I said, it's going to be by the, by the time that the crow cries three times, you're going to have um, you know, went against me, gone against me or deny me. That's what it was. You're going to have to deny me. You will deny me, uh, three times before the crow cocks. I think it's something like that. It says, um, so is that going to be you when it actually comes down to it? It's easy to say it in your house. It's easy for all of us to be like, you know, absolutely. I would have never me included. Why are you sitting in this comfortable? You're not in the peace situation Peter was. But that's the whole point. That's what we are in. We are in the period in grace where we need to make sure that we get built up so it doesn't happen. Those stories are there for you to talk about it, for you to know that there's, you know, and to, and to resonate with it, for you to know that that's something that you just cannot do. So greater is he that is in you. So let's go to 1 John and let's bring that out. Let's go to 1 John 4 and 4. Because greater is he that is in you. You have to know the power that you have being a chosen nation. So let's go to 1 John 4 and 4. Oh, that's lucky. It does not start with O. <laughs> 1 John 4 and 4. Ye are of 
Elohim, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we got to know what's going on here. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you don't be scared of nobody. I don't care what happens, what you got to go up against. You go up to it with it, go through it as a soldier and know that if it is time, it is because the Most High has called you to go. It's never in their control. I don't care if it's somebody that snatches you now. Let's say it's before the end times and something happens to you and you go through some type of trauma. Let's say that you get, you know, for y'all forbid, get kidnapped or something like that. We know it's a lot of trafficking that's going on. We hear it a lot on Instagram, a lot of stories that are going on of people trying to get people drugged and snatch people off the street. So let's say that something like that does happen to you, right? Let's say that you are dealing with a situation where you have a gun to your head or you're about to die. You, your faith got to be so strong that that still, you, you can find resolve in that. You can find solace within yourself. So that fear, that fear might be there. I'm not trying to say that you won't be scared. However, you need to know that you can call upon the most high because he's there with you. He will always be there with you. That you know that if that is your time to go, then it's because the most high sanctioned it. Not anybody else. Not the person that's there that thinks that they can take your life. Nobody else sanctions your death but the Most High. You got to know that and get built up in that. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to Sirach 24 and 24. And if you don't have one, um, have an Apocrypha, then I will make sure that I read this very clearly. So you can hear it and hear it as it is written. So uh, Ecclesiasticus 24 and 24, the book of Sirach, faint not to be strong in the most high that he may confirm you cleave unto him for the most high almighty Elohim is Elohim alone. And beside him, there is no other savior, right? So I'm gonna read that again. Faint not to be strong in Adonai that in the Lord, and I'll read it as, you know what, I'm going to read it as written. Let's just take out, I, I know that I love to speak it in Hebrew and say his holy name, but let's read it as written for you ones that do not have an apocrypha. So Sirach 24 and 24, Ecclesiasticus 24 and 24. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you, cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone, and beside him there is no other Savior no other savior faint not have strong faith get built up in your faith so you do not have any doubt you don't waver in it and you know his strength and you know the possibilities of what he can do for you in your life through you so let's also go to galatians 3 and 22. So Galatians 3 and 22 reads as follows, but the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Hamashiach might be given to them that believe. That's right. That is a promise to all of us that are believers in the most high, that faith of Hamashiach is given to you. So you already have it. You got to just build it up, build it up, pray on it read these scriptures, you know, get into this, you know, and really see the examples that are in this Bible. That's how you do it. You know, I know maybe some of you are wondering if you're new to the truth, well, then how do I, you know, strengthen my faith? How do I do it? It is really getting into your Bible. The most high will bless, ask for it. You know, what you ask, you shall receive, you know, making sure that, um, and I was going to write that one down too, but what, what you ask, you shall receive. Uh, um, let's go to, how did I put my other book down here? I think that's Matthew or Mark. I can't look because I'm using my phone, so I can't look it up right now. Um, but a lot of you have already heard that scripture before, asking you shall receive. And I was going to bring that out in faith for this um, uh for this lesson in faith because that is one of the ones that I wrote down in, in my scripture book. Um, but 
when you ask the most high anything, ask him wisdom, you want to ask for more faith, ask for strength, ask for whatever it is that you want to ask for. You ask the most high and you shall receive. You're a believer and you have Hamashiach, you know, as your savior, you know these things, you're walking in this truth. Um, then ask first off and make sure you say that prayer. Second off, you want to actually get into your scriptures, start reading your Bible, you know, start understanding these stories, start seeing these stories of faith and how they um, are great examples and shiny examples to be able to, you know, see where a lot of our uh, four, uh, forefathers and our ancestors went off and how there's things that you don't want to do, uh, being repentant to all of your old sins. So making sure that, you know, you are repentant. So there's um, uh, ways that you have had that you're trying to clear so you can, you know, have room to deepen your faith, you know, so you don't have those kind of doubt and anxiety, you don't have all that stuff, you know, and study your actual scripture, study your Bible, you know, really kind of get into this thing. All of that is going to help you really build up your faith. So, um, you know, we want to make sure again, but the scripture have concluded all under sin that the promise of faith by Hamashiach can be given to them that believe. It's beautiful. So let's go to the book of Hebrews next and go to chapter 11. Hebrews 11 and 6 reads as follows, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to uh, the Most High must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So again, it goes back into what I just said, diligently seeking him, making sure that you are reading scripture, making sure that you are praying, making sure that you are running after the Most High through his son Hamashiach, you know, and know that if you don't do that, that it's impossible to please him. If you don't have faith, he knows that you've never seen him face to face. Nobody can see him face to face. You die. There's, you've never seen how Mashiach walk on this earth. You have to have faith. There's no way that you can even say that you're a believer that you are, or even do the things that you want or get the things you want, the kingdom, all these things. It's, it's impossible without faith. How are, like I said, how are you going to, how are you going to go into the kingdom or get out of this wilderness if you don't believe that the chairs are going to come save you? We not all walk in there. We are all from the four corners of the earth. The most high in scripture says he's going to bring us from the four corners of the earth. Do you believe that uh, that we were taken out of Egypt with a strong hand and that the, the Red Sea was parted for us, that we walked across it? That sounds crazy if you think about that. An actual ocean going up on both sides and walking on dry land. The miracles that are in this Bible will build up so much of your faith. Because without it, again, it is impossible to please him. So how else could we put, we can say we can follow these law, statutes, commandments all we want. You can think that you're pleasing him because you're without sin, because you're not transgressing the law. You can think that just because you're, you know, a part of congregations and you're doing the work and you're, you know, doing the Sabbath and you're doing these feast days and all this stuff that you're going to just make it in. No, none of us know we're going to make it in. We have no idea. We have to stay humble, stay faithful and Pray that the Most High blesses us with the with the honor, honor of getting in and being a part of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So from there, I want to go to Psalm 18 and 3. So hallelujah. Without it, we cannot please him. All praises, right? All praises. So let's go to Psalm 18 and 3. Three. All right, so Psalm 18 and 3, and it reads as follows I will call upon Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised, so shall, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And that goes back to what I was saying. When you are dealing with your enemies, and then the time may come, and we are in these end days. You got to know to call upon Hamashiach, who is the son, and through him, you'll be saved to the most high. So you got to repeat those words. You got to say his name. You got to say all praises to Abba Yahweh, Bahashim Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, all praises to the most high Yahweh. Call upon him so you will be saved from your enemies. 
he will do anything. He can make the guillotine stop. Your head can be in a guillotine. In the end days, your head could be in a noose. In the end days, you could have a gun to your head at any point in time. You could almost get hit by a car. You can almost have from somebody trying to run you over because it says save from your enemies, but somebody's trying to really do it. And all of it can be stopped by the Most High. The Most High can stop that car in the moment and, and, and the whole car just shuts down. The guillotine can stop right here at the nip of your neck. The, the noose can come falling off the tree. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. It's all up to the Most High. It's all up to His will. You got to get built up in your face so you know that whatever it is that happens is because he wants it to happen. Now, granted, granted, he does love a martyr and absolutely does love to see, just like he saw with Yahweh Shai, to see him get bruised for him. So there are uh, times that you have to remember that there might be things that might happen that you have to uh, um, get, you know, killed. Um, and do it for the most high and know that you're doing it with strength for the most high. That's also scripture. So get into these scriptures, you guys. That's all scripture itself that Yahweh I even said that they're going to hate you because they hated me and you are going to be taken up to be killed. And it said before you come and when you come before them, don't think about what you're going to say, paraphrasing. The most of that Yahweh is going to put those words in your mouth. So you can speak before your enemies. So it's important to get into these scriptures so you know that stuff so it can help you get built up, right? So let's go from uh, Psalm to James. So let's go to James 1, 6, and 7. James 1, 6, and 7 reads as follows. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth, is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. One more. Let For let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Most High. So let's read that again. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Most High. So he doesn't want us wavering. Scripture also says he doesn't want you to be hot and cold. He doesn't want you to be lukewarm. He wants you to be hot or cold, sorry. He doesn't want you to be lukewarm. He spew you out of his mouth. He does not want you to be lukewarm. You have to be hot for him in this truth. You got to be on fire for him in this truth and know that when you pray, it's going to happen. So also a little tip is don't go back praying about the same thing over and over and over again. The Most High doesn't want you to to doubt that he's going to do it he you asked and you shall receive so you don't have to keep bugging him in every prayer and being like okay i asked you yesterday you haven't done it yet i asked you again you haven't done it yet when are you gonna do it when are you gonna do it no you have to have strong faith that like they say in the world let go and let god you already prayed on it let it go it's his time to, to he's gonna do it in his time when he wants to do it doesn't mean he didn't hear you. Doesn't mean he's not going to do it. But he don't do it when you want him to do it just because you want him to do it. That's not how this thing works. We are the clay. He is the potter. You know, so we can't be going to him questioning all this stuff. I can make it happen on my time. I can make it happen on my time. No, no, it don't work like that. That's where faith comes in. That you know that it is going to happen. So let's go to Romans 5, 2 through 5. Romans 5, 2 through 5 reads as follows. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of the Most High. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation, tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope. And the hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of the Most High is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Man, that is just so beautiful right there. So we need to know that we have access to faith through grace, right? All right, so I love that right there. I really do. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. That's right, man. That's right. As those tribulations work with patience and patience, experience and experience hope. Hallelujah. 
All right, so let's go to Matthew 6, and I'm going to read 25 through 34. And this is one of my favorite. When I read it, when I first read it, um, months and months and months ago, when I first read it, I, I cried. I was like, this right here, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, oh my gosh, this right here <laughs> is so true. Like, it's so important to be to have deep faith and to understand how all of the world works, you know, with nature and how all of this stuff works and how so many things function um, because their faith is so strong, but they don't think about it. So this is, this scripture is going to bring it out. So Matthew 6, 25 through 34. All right. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. And this is in red letter. So this means that Hamashiach himself, what the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, is speaking. So we take this, this is, this is what he says, all right? So therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body and what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. And lilies are most high's favorite flower. 30. Wherefore, if Yahweh so clotheth the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Drop the mic. Mic drop all day. Read that over. Highlight that. Let it resonate within your spirit. Even though I read it, it's something different when you read it yourself. If you haven't gotten a Bible yet, then download the Bible app. There's no reason why you shouldn't have a Bible in front of you. You can order one off of Amazon. Um, they cost maybe maybe between 10 to 15 to 20 dollars you can get ones with big letters that i got from me and my king so it's not so small so you can read it but however you can also get the bible app there's different versions of the bible but try to stick with the king james but you can read it on your phone read these scriptures that right there is so beautiful about faith such a great example about how your faith should be strong. Why are you worried about how I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, how I'm going to be clothed? What about that? What about that? What about this? What about that? All the stuff that we're worried about. So like he like he said, for after all these things do the Gentiles see, not you. You have a God. You have the Elohim of the one and only God of Israel. That's yours. He is ours. That's what we got to understand. That's how we got to get our faith built up, you know? So let's go to 1 Peter 8 and 9. So I'm almost done. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this lesson thus far, helping you remember that if you ain't even think about it, get built up in your faith. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. So this is going to be the last scripture I'm going to bring out. And then I want to read two Bible stories of Hamashiach and examples of having strong or needing to have strong faith. So 1 Peter uh, 8 and 9 read as follows. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom thou now ye see him not, yet believing, 
yea rejoicing with God with yea rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of joy receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul so I'm going to read that again because I kind of stumbled a little bit so first Peter 8 through 9 and this is having faith without seeing the most high whom having not seen ye love in whom Though now ye see him not, yea, believing, yea, rejoice and joy with joy, unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So these are all just great precepts. I hope that, you know, resonate with you guys again, you know, go over this stuff, go into more stories about um, faith is this all over this Bible. There's so many I could have brought out in Proverbs and, and Psalm about faith, but I just want to kind of consolidate it down a little bit. But what I do want us to do is let's go to Mark 4, and we are going to read this fantastic story about Yahawashai and his disciples. Um, and these two stories I'm going to bring out, you guys have heard before. Um, but I can't always assume that because not everybody is coming from a Christian background or um, are already, you know, in the truth and you know who knows who's watching these videos they don't tell you so i don't know who's watching these videos so um we're gonna read them and if it's the first time then let it be encouraging to you and if it isn't then let you hear it a little bit different than what you normally heard it so let's go to mark 4 36 through 41 and it reads as follows and when they had sent away the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he, and they're talking about uh, Hamashiach, Hamashiach. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. We have to be the same way. We have to know that our faith has to be so deep that we can move mountains because Yahweh has given it to us. We have to know that we can command the ocean. We are not Hamashiach, so I'm not saying that. But Hamashiach did say it to the disciples that if your faith was so strong, then you would know that I'm with you, that you can. And the difference is, is that Hamashiach was with them in person. But we are blessed on top of that to have Hamashiach within us through the Holy Spirit residing in us. That's from Acts. I mean, that's from Acts. Read the book of Acts chapter 2 and how the Holy Spirit was put into all of the disciples. You know, that's what you have to understand. This walk is a very serious walk. This walk is a very powerful walk. How Mashiach lives within you. His spirit lives within you. <sighs> Come on, people. I mean, we need to, y'all got to get serious about this thing. Get excited about this thing. Get serious about this thing. So I'm going to finish it off by going to Matthew 14. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's what we just brought out. First John 4 and 4. All right, so let's go to Matthew 14, 22 through 33. And straight away, Hamashiach constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he went, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Yahawashai went unto them, walking on the sea. Yes, walking on water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for him. Uh, sorry, they cried out for fear, Salakia. It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straight away, Hamashiach spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Adonai, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. 
And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Hamashiach. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried saying, Adonai, save me. And immediately Hamashiach stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, O oh, a truth, thou art the son of Elohim. And with that, I am going to wrap up this video. And I want to wish all of you guys a fantastic and blessed and beautiful Sabbath. Let's think about it. How deep is your faith? So hopefully this video was encouraging. Hopefully it was edifying to somebody out there that you get built up in your faith in these end days. You take it seriously, that you make sure that you pray to get your garment clean, that Hamashiach worked with you, uh, that you know you are constantly thinking about how to uh, just walk in righteousness. Absolutely just walk in righteousness. I can say it that way. I am just so thankful to be able to sit here in front of you guys again for another Sabbath that we got to see another Sabbath. Go ahead and prep. I'm uh, going to upload a video. It'll be uploaded. Um, I might upload them both today. I'll upload them both today. I'm going to do a video on um, Sabbath rules. Um, I've been requested and I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that should be up around the same time that this is going to be up in a couple hours. Um, and, uh, hopefully that helps out you ladies that have had a couple of questions here and there. We're going to pull some scriptures and get into Sabbath rules. But again, thank you so much, you guys. I love you. Thank you for watching and tuning in. You have a blessed, restful Sabbath and that's it. Shabbat Shalom.